Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Chelsea and I am a full-time reseller. I sell on Poshmark, eBay, and Mercari, and also Facebook Marketplace. I have really been enjoying selling over there lately too. Anyway, what I like to do is buy stuff that is undervalued at places like the Goodwill Outlet and garage sales and then resell it for profit online. Well, today I'm here to tell you about my Poshmark sales. Now, it's been a long time since I've done a what sold video, so I decided to just kind of give you the most important sales and that is I think the items that have sold for the most money um, I'm gonna go over my sales from June and July on Poshmark um, the sales that were over $35 so Anyway, I'm gonna go over my sales that were $35 or more because those are the things that are, I guess, what we would call like bolos, the things that you really wanna look out for when you're at the thrift store. So I'm gonna go over those sales with you really quick. Um, I'm just gonna share my screen with you here so you can see what items I sold and maybe these are things that you can look out for when you're out thrifting. So without further ado, let's get into my sales from June and July. Okay, so the first sale I wanted to show you are these shoes. So these are Vibram Five Fingers V-Run purple and blue <laughs> shoes. These are those shoes that look like little finger toes. Um, I guess they're really good for running. I don't know anything about these. All I know is I found them at the Goodwill outlet and they're very lightweight shoes. There was even some like pilling on them but they still sold for $36. I think that was an offer from the buyer. Um, so anyway, I was really happy to accept that sale because my cost of goods was very low, right around a dollar. So I made $27.30 after fees, after my cost of goods around $26. Next was this sweater. Um, I was really excited about this sale because I also picked up this sweater at the Goodwill outlet and I just thought it was so cute. It has like Easter bunny on it. Um, some eggs, a little chick. Um, it had um, like fabric colored buttons, like knit buttons. It was just so stinking cute and very quirky. So anyway, this sold for $60. Um, and that was a great return on investment considering I got it from the Goodwill outlet. Some things to know about why this sweater sold for so much, in my opinion, is the fact that it's pastel colors. That's really trendy right now is pastels. Also, some higher end brands like Love Shack Fancy and um, really a lot of like even Anthropology are producing sweaters that are similar to this, like really quirky styles, really fun bulky knits and fun prints. And this is goes along with that grandma core trend, um, kind of leans into cottage core a little bit. Another term that I learned recently is kitschy kawaii. Um, that's apparently a term that describes this um, pastel aesthetic. And um, I also put the term grandma core, cottage core, soft girl. So all of these different aesthetics really play into this particular style. All the cool kids are wearing stuff like this nowadays, apparently. <laughs> so anyway, this sold for $60 and after fees and my cost of goods, I earned $48 after, well, I earned around 40, 45, $46 on this. All right, next were these Donald J. Pliner peep toe booties. So these were a really good style. I did pick these up. Um, they sat for about a month or two before they sold. But once again, it is it was summer still. I think this sold in July. Anyway, they sold for $52. And I was really happy with that sale considering they sold in the middle of the summer. But they're these cute peep toe booties. So I guess they're really good transition shoes. Anyway, Donald J. Pliner is a brand to be on the lookout for. Um, in my experience, Donald J. Pliner normally does a lot better on eBay, but surprisingly these sold on Poshmark, which I wasn't expecting. So let me see if I can find you the logo to show you what Donald J. Pliner looks like. Yeah, it's kind of hard to show you because it's just like the inside of the shoe here. But um, normally Donald J. Pliner does very well, so I say be on the lookout for that brand. Um, I picked these up at Plato's Closet. I think I paid up for them a little bit, so I paid probably around $8 dollars five to eight dollars for them so i profited probably around 35 dollars after um my cost of goods okay this was a really fun sale this is probably the thing i've paid up for actually the most ever in my reselling career um i don't really pay up for things very often guys i am really a low cost reseller at this time in my reselling game i feel like i still have a lot to learn but this particular sale 
um, I was really excited about because I paid up for this. I paid $40 for this at Plato's Closet, um, which I thought was a lot, but I looked up comps for this and honestly, I could not find anything like available in this particular purse, this Betsy Johnson purse. And I know that Betsy Johnson purses can be very collectible. So I also checked the sold listings on Poshmark and one of these same bags had resold for, I think it was $250. So I was like, okay, this is obviously really rare. I think I'm gonna pick this up. So I grabbed it and um, it was kind of a risk, but I was kind of, I was really excited to list it. We were actually still out. I had bought this from Plato's Closet and my husband was busy in another store. So I went out to the car and I photographed this purse in the car. <laughs> so you can see here at the bottom, I used a lot of, st I, I borrowed some stock photos from someone, but then I photographed the actual purse because I wanna make sure I have actual photos of my item in the car. Um, you can see there the original price on this was like $85, I think. Um, anyway, someone, told me, commented on this listing and was like, don't you know this only retails for $85? And I was like, yes. <laughs> Actually, I just deleted the comment because it's not helpful. Um, things like this, it doesn't really matter what they retail for because if they're collectible, people will pay up for them. And if they're not available, it's just basic supply and demand economics. So anyway, I listed this, I think at $250. And within hours of listing, I got an offer for $185. So I believe I got an offer for this before I even got home. Like I bought it and on the way home from the store, I got the offer and I decided to accept it because I thought that was a really fast return on investment. And yeah, it looked like I was selling to a collector as well because I looked at this lady's history, the one who bought the bag for me and she has bought many Betsy Johnson bags. So I'm like, you know what? She's a collector. I know she's gonna appreciate this and she's gonna give me a fair rating. So I let her buy it. Sure enough, um, it all turned out great. So I made a pretty good profit on this. I, let's see. So my earnings were $148 after my cost of goods of 40, I profited like $108 within the same day. So that was a really fun sale and I think it was definitely worth paying up for. Okay, next was this Terzo Millennio white linen maxi dress is made in Italy. Um, I didn't know anything about this brand. I don't know if it's the brand that helped it sell for as much. I actually noticed that TJ Maxx and Marshall sells this brand, but I found this at the Goodwill outlet. It's a 100% linen dress. It's very pretty style. So I'm not sure what exactly about it helped it sell for this much money, but I was pleasantly surprised with this sale. So there's the logo and it was made in Italy. So maybe look out for that brand. I was really excited to get $56 for this. Um, having gotten it from the bins. So after my cost of goods, I profited around $42 on that. Really exciting. Okay, next was this Calvin Klein gingham dress. Now this dress I actually sat on for almost, oh, almost a year. Like I, I bought this dress last year at the TJ Maxx, like yellow tag clearance event. Um, but I recently relisted it and this sold a couple days after relisting it for $40. So I think I paid like $10 for this dress though. So I profited around $20 and 50 cents. So maybe this wasn't a super great sale. It did sell for $40. So if you could find it for, I guess, less money, um, Calvin Klein can do well. I think maybe the time I bought it, many people were just not going into the office or having need of nice dresses like that. But I think people are starting to do a lot more and need pretty dresses. So I don't know. I don't know if that helped, but it was kind of a similar situation with this Diane Van Furstenberg dress. So this was a super cute dress. Like it was, I think hundred percent silk. Okay. 95% silk, 5% spandex and this adorable gingham style. I paid up for this dress too. I think I paid 15 or $20 for it. Anyway, it sat around for a long time. If you can see the background there, it's the door this door, but I used to have it over there as my backdrop, which was over a year ago. So this dress sat for a long time, but it finally sold for $40. Um, so I earned around $25 on this after like not even $25. I probably earned around $20 on this. So not a great sale, 15 to $20. Um, it sold for a lot. So if you can find it for less of a price, um, Diamond Van Furstenberg is always a good brand to pick up. It just, this took the right buyer to come along and snatch that up. Okay, now this was a very fast sale. This Lululemon Pace Rival skirt in a four-way stretch. Okay, so it's just this really pretty Lululemon skirt. It's like multi-tiered, has a back pocket. This sold for $60 and it sold like within a week of listing. This was a really quick sale. So this sold for $60. I picked this up at the bins. 
Hello, Cosmo. Are you here to say hi to everyone? It sold for $60 after my Poshmark fee and shipping discount. Um, I profited around $45.50 after my cost of goods. I'm going to say hello. He just doesn't really want to be friendly. But here's my cat. Here's Cosmo. He's probably going to run away now. Oh, you're going to stay here? How sweet. Okay. Back to <laughs> reselling. Okay, so I have this Lily Pulitzer K Twist Bando bikini top. This I picked up at the Goodwill outlet um, in Charlotte. Um, I got $35 for this, which I was really excited about because this probably cost me less than a dollar. So I profited around $27 on this bikini top. Lily Pulitzer, I feel like, is always a solid pickup for me. Okay, next were these Ugg Rainbow boots um these sold for 35 dollars, and there was even some scuffing on the toes they were not in perfect condition they had some scuffing i just disclosed all of the flaws with it and they still sold for 35 dollars. so i was pleasantly surprised with this sale i picked these up at the bin so i profited around 27 dollars on them after my fees okay next was this theory blouse i was so tempted to keep this it was such a cute little blouse um, I did have it listed higher, but I think I ended up price dropping it for like closet clear out or something. This sold for $35. And after my Poshmark fees, I got $28. I did pick this up at the bins. So around $27 in profit on that. I really like the brand theory. I know not everyone likes it, but I tend to do well for like more substantial pieces. I have some basics in my closet. Um, like that shirt I feel like sold because it had the interesting off the shoulder detailing. Um, some stuff from Theory, if it's just really, really basic, it may sit for a while. Okay, next was this Madewell sweater. This is an adorable sweater. I found this at the bins. It was new with tags, I believe. Yes, it was new with tags from the bins, which was so exciting. Um, I think it might have even had some cashmere blend in it. I can't remember. A wool blend. So yeah, it was just a really fun sweater with like these balloon style sleeves. It was a deep green and it was really hard to capture the color in the photo. Anyway, it still sold for $36. And after my Poshmark fee, my shipping discount, I got about $26 in, um, made about $26 from that. And it looks like this was a viewer who purchased this. I forgot about that. So she said it was her first made well piece and she can't wait to wear it in the cooler weather. Ah, oh, so she'll be wearing it soon. Anyway, thank you. And that's, that's so sweet. All right. So gray grays and garage. Thank you for buying that for me. Okay. Next was this Eileen Fisher wrap dress. I think I already showed this in a video, so I'll be fast. I picked this up on my thrifting road trip. Um, I think I paid like one or $2 for it. It sold for $35. Eileen Fisher is always a solid pickup. This did have a few discolorations on it. Still got $35 for it. After my fees and shipping discount, I profited around $25 on that. <clears throat> okay, next were these Everlane um, Dayglove Ballet Flats. I think I paid $10 for these um, from the Goodwill Boutique in Charlotte. Anyway, these are worth paying up for. This is a very trendy brand. A lot of the influencers on YouTube and social media are really promoting Everlane, and it's a very sustainable, sustainable, ethical brand. So I would just keep on the lookout for Everlane. These sold for $55 after my fees. I made $42 after my cost of goods. I profited around $32 on those shoes. Um, next was this Philip Lynn wool boat neck sweater. I actually picked this up from the bins. I showed it in a haul video a while ago. This sat for a little while, but once again, it, I think it was just taking the right season, but this even still sold in the summer for $50 and it was a hundred percent wool. Just a really pretty, pretty pink sweater. Um, after my fees of $10, I profited 40 after my cost of goods. I profited about $39 in my bank. Okay, this was a really fun dress and it took me forever to list. This was one of those things that needed some repairs and cleaning. So it just hung on my rack for like months and months. It probably hung there for like, I don't know, six months for, before I listed it. And it was just a really, really cute dress. It was a vintage, all that jazz dress. And I just put off listing it forever and ever. Finally, I got it listed and I think it sold within the week for $40. So after my fees, I profited 32. I got it from the bin, so about a dollar cost of goods there. Okay, next were these Timberland booties. Um, I also picked these up at the bins. They were a little scuffed up. There was some wear on the toe, but I was still able to get $38 for them. And after my fees and cost of goods, I profited around $28 on those. <laughs> okay, this vintage leather Harley captain's hat 
was a really fun find. I picked this up at a garage sale and it actually took me a long time to list too because there was some discoloring like along the edge of the brim of the hat. If you can see it right there, it almost looked like, um, like some water damage or something, mildew, I don't know. Anyway, I just decided to list it as is and just photograph all the flaws. And you know, you have to provide measurements with hats. Hats are always a hard sale for me, I feel like. But anyway, they sold for this sold for $50 and I my earnings were 40. After my cost of goods, I profited around $39. Anyway, I got a four-star rating and I have a feeling the person was unhappy with maybe the spotting or something on it. I don't know. She didn't leave a reason. So I was kind of bummed that the buyer wasn't happy, but you know, I don't I don't know what to say. <laughs> All right, these Kate Spade shoes, I already showed this in a video as well, so I'll just go over this really quick. Picked these up for around $10. They sold for $83 really quickly as well. I think they were just a really good style. And I also love how a lot of these higher end brands have style names. So if someone's looking for this particular shoe, they're easier to find. So these were the Kate Spade Livia pink bow slingback pumps. Um, after my cost of goods and fees, I think I got around $55 for this when it's all said and done. Okay, next was this really fun vintage picnic basket. I picked this up at an estate sale for like a dollar. So this was a really cool find. Um, actually, a return customer bought this for me. Someone who had already purchased from me in the past came along and bought this. She asked me to ship it same day. I think it was like a Friday. I'd already done my shipping, but since she was so nice about it, I got, him sh I got it shipped out right away. But um, it was just so cute. It's like this wine basket, picnic basket. It had like a wine bottle opener, some little napkins, a glass. It was just really cute and I had to I had to get it from the estate sale and someone swooped up and bought it. I think it was just a couple weeks so I got a really nice um, review here. She said it was a gift so that's really nice. What a fun gift. Okay, moving right along. My next sale was this Holly Hobby 1970s vintage quilt. I picked this up from the bins. It was a small like child size quilt. It was probably... I mean, it was pretty small. So I was really happy with $35 for this. It did take a while to sell, but it also got a lot of interest. Um, so it had 11 likes when it sold. Um, a lot of people were interested in it, but it took a while for someone to pull the trigger on this. So I sold it for $35. And after my fees, I made 20, 28. Um, my cost of goods was around a dollar, give or take. Oh my goodness scared me to death there's like an amazon guy like right outside my window right there and he like bent down like his face was literally right in the window just now i feel like i just had a heart attack he scared me to death oh my word and here i am just talking at a camera he's probably like what is that girl doing oh my word <laughs> Whew. okay next was this vintage bag um the brand is unpronounceable to me so just look at it and appreciate it i don't really know what this brand name is anyway this is a cool bag i found from the bins and i picked it up because i just loved the look of it it looked very like expensive it looked like a carpet bag very anthropology-esque so i looked up the inner tag to see what the name of the, the name brand of this bag was and the comps for this bag were really good. Now this bag was um, a little bit more worn than the comps I was seeing on eBay. You see there's some staining on the inside. There was some wear on the outside, but here's the logo. Anyway, this brand had purses sold on eBay from like in the $100 and up range, but this was a smaller bag. The ones that had sold on eBay were bigger. So I was really happy with this $80 sale on this bag. I got it from the bins, like I said, for like around a dollar. So I profited around $61 on this bag, which was really exciting. It did take a while to sell, but I think this is a bag that just requires someone specific to come along and appreciate it. So really fun sale there. Okay, this is probably um, my most profitable sale next to the um, Flamingo purse was this um, ski wear set. So guys, I sold a ski wear set on June 6th. <laughs> This actually sold while I was on my thrifting road trip and I had to have my husband pack this up for me because the person who bought it said she was going on vacation and needed it immediately. I want to know where she was vacationing that she needed this in the middle of June. So this was a really fun ski set that I found at the bins and because it was a set, it had like the, the top jacket part and the like the overall set, I just had to get it. So I listed it at I think I had it listed at like 175 and the buyer offered me 150. I think that's how it was, or maybe she bought it at full price. I can't remember. Either way, I was thrilled to make this sale and 
totally accommodated her request to ship this out immediately. I called up my husband and was like, hey, do you want $100? And he's like, why? And I'm like, um, I just sold this ski wear set and the lady wants it to be shipped today. So he did, he shipped it out for me. So I earned $120 on this after my cost of goods, probably like 118. This set probably cost me like two bucks. It was such a fun sale in the middle of summer, which is why I say sell anything all year round because you never know what people are looking for. Like this kind of stuff can sell any time of the year. So those are my top sales from June and July. I hope you enjoyed seeing what sold for me and let me know down below what your best sale was from this summer um, or just like your weirdest sale even. So your highest sale and your weirdest sale. Like did you sell sweaters and um, ski suit jackets? <laughs> let me know what you've been selling and what your best sale was from the summer. And I hope you have a great day. I will see you next time. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up like subscribe all the things share with a friend if you'd like to um and i hope you have a wonderful day bye